catheter ablation, a widely used procedure for managing atrial fibrillation, encompasses a multitude of factors that intricately shape its success rate. The categorization of AFib into paroxysmal persistent or long-standing persistent types, the selection of an appropriate ablation technique such as pulmonary vein isolation or substrate modification, the energy used, and the consideration of patient-specific characteristics like age, comorbidities, duration of AFib, and left atrial size significantly influence the efficacy of the procedure. Extensive clinical trials consistently demonstrated the substantial benefits of catheter ablation in mitigating AF recurrence radius, restoring sinus rhythm, and improving the overall quality of life. When considering the success rates of catheter ablation treatments for atrial fibrillation, it's important to recognize that the outcomes can vary significantly depending on the specific type of AFib, whether it's paroxysmal or persistent AFib. Research indicates that single procedure success rates typically show a much higher level of effectiveness for paroxysmal AFib compared to persistent AFib cases. Several factors come into play here, including the duration of AFib episodes, the choice of ablation techniques, and individual patient characteristics, all of which influence the overall efficacy of the ablation procedure. Although the initial success rates post-ablation are encouraging, Sustaining long-term success involves continuous monitoring, lifestyle modifications, and the potential consideration of repeat procedures to maintain optimal rhythm control. Several studies have shown that ablation success rates for paroxysmal AFib range from 70-85%, while success rates for persistent AFib range from 40-60% for a single procedure. This difference in success rate can be attributed to several factors including the complexity of the arrhythmia, duration of symptoms, and underlying structural changes in the heart. One significant factor affecting ablation success rates is atrial remodeling. Atrial remodeling refers to structural changes in the atria caused by prolonged episodes of AFib. In patients with persistent AFib, these structural changes become more pronounced over time due to continuous exposure to irregular electrical signals these changes can include enlargement and fibrosis or scarring of the atria, which can lead to altered conduction pathways and increased vulnerability to future episodes of AFib. These structural changes make it more challenging to achieve long-term success with ablation as it becomes increasingly difficult for a single procedure to eliminate all areas responsible for initiating or maintaining AFib. Furthermore, Studies have shown that these structural changes are more prevalent in patients with persistent AFib, providing a possible explanation for the lower success rates in this group. The AFib ablation procedure is performed using different energy sources, including radio frequency, cryoballoon, and pulse field ablation. Each of these energy sources has its advantages and limitations in terms of success rates. Radio frequency ablation, frequently referred to as a burning energy, has been the most widely used method for many years, with a reported success rate of over 80% for paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Studies have shown that cryo-balloon ablation, using a freezing energy, has a similar success rate to radio frequency. On the other hand, pulse field ablation is a relatively new technique that has shown promising results in initial trials with success rates comparable to cryo-balloon and radio frequency ablation. While further research is needed to establish a definitive comparison between these energy sources, it is clear that all three techniques have proven successful in treating atrial fibrillation and improving patients' quality of life with a reported similar success rate between the multiple energy sources. In general, I feel that the timing of the procedure, performing an ablation for AFib sooner than later, before any significant atrial remodeling, plays a more important role in the success rate of an ablation procedure than the type of energy used during the procedure. In addition to catheter ablation, surgical ablation procedures like the mini-maze procedure offer alternative treatment options for AFib patients, particularly patients with more advanced atrial fibrillation. While surgical ablation can yield higher success rates in some cases, it carries increased risks compared to catheter ablation. Factors such as success rates and associated risks should be carefully evaluated in collaboration with healthcare providers to determine the most suitable treatment approach for individual patients. Patient-specific attributes such as age, left atrial diameter, 
and comorbidities play a crucial role in influencing the outcomes of catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation. Ongoing clinical trials continuously unveil valuable insights into the efficacy of ablation procedures, highlighting the significance of robust first-line management strategies and meticulous long-term follow-up protocols. Notably, ablation stands out for its superior effectiveness compared to antiarrhythmic drugs in the prevention of AFib recurrences. This underscores the critical importance of prompt intervention and the delivery of comprehensive care tailored to each individual patient. Multiple studies have shown that early ablation after diagnosis significantly improves the success rate of treating certain medical conditions. For instance, a study conducted by the American Heart Association found that patients who underwent ablation within one year of atrial fibrillation diagnosis had a higher success rate compared to those who waited longer. Furthermore, a study published in the Journal of Thoracic Disease concluded that early ablation for pulmonary vein isolation in patients with atrial fibrillation resulted in significantly better outcomes and lower risks of complications. These findings highlight the importance of timely intervention through ablation to increase the chances of successful treatment for various medical conditions. Therefore, it is crucial for healthcare professionals to consider early ablation as a viable option for their patients to improve their overall success rate and quality of life. Post-ablation monitoring and follow-up play crucial roles in evaluating the success of the procedure and identifying any potential recurrences. Implementing comprehensive long-term follow-up protocols, which may involve the use of at-home monitoring devices and implantable monitors, allows for a continuous assessment of heart health in the post-ablation phase. Recognizing the importance of a blanking period a temporary period immediately after the procedure, and ensuring consistent follow-up evaluations are conducted are key elements in maximizing patient outcomes and effectively managing any possible recurrence of atrial fibrillation. To optimize the success of catheter ablation procedures, patients play a crucial role in managing various risk factors. Conditions like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and obesity can impact the efficacy of the procedure post-ablation, lifestyle adjustments are key to sustaining positive outcomes. For instance, focusing on weight management, addressing sleep apnea issues, and reducing alcohol intake can significantly enhance the results and lower the chances of recurrence. A comprehensive approach that includes tailored lifestyle modifications and individualized care is essential for maximizing the effectiveness of ablation treatments. Catheter ablation stands as a cornerstone in the treatment of AFib, offering patients a path towards improved quality of life and reduced recurrence rates. By understanding the nuances of ablation procedures, patient characteristics, and post-procedural care, individuals can navigate the complexities of AFib treatment with informed decisions and proactive management strategies. The evolving landscape of ablation techniques and research insights continues to shape the efficacy and success of AFib treatments highlighting the importance of tailored approaches and comprehensive patient-centered care in achieving optimal outcomes in the management of atrial fibrillation.